Hello and welcome to our devotion for Wednesday, May 31st, entitled, The Sick Get Healthy. Now, when Jennifer was sharing Sunday morning, she was talking about the fact that we all have a plot of ground. We all have a piece of land. Every one of us have a life. And that life, that ground, has the ability to produce good fruit. But not every plot of land is equal. Some of them we that we get are already growing and lush and, and they still have to be maintained. We can still m mess them up. We can still erode the soil. We can, we can trash it, but it's a little better starting place than some people that end up with a plot that's rocky or a place that uh, is uh, thorny or weedy or those kind of things. So they're not all equal, but they're all capable of producing great fruit, good stuff. So we talked about the fact that there is no land that doesn't require some maintenance. There's some that looks more lush, but we find out because of the rainy season and the other things that come, they're just as challenging to farm as one that doesn't look as promising on the, on the beginning, but actually has good underground moisture and rich soil. So we can never look and go, oh, those people have no problems, because they obviously do. We can never look and go, well, those people ought to just pull themselves up by their bootstraps, because it's more difficult than that sometimes. But it doesn't matter where we are. Like I talked about yesterday, every one of us have great things to be grateful for. Every one of us have the opportunity for God to do great things in our life. So we have to understand that no matter where we are, God always starts with us exactly where our plot of ground is. And he's filled with mercy and compassion, but he's also filled with vision and purpose. He's looking for us to make that plot of land fruitful. Now, I want to read a passage to you that Jennifer used Sunday morning, and it's in Matthew chapter 9, verse beginning in verse 14. So listen to the words here. And Jesus went on from there, and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collecting booth. Now, we all know that tax collectors, if we've been in the church for very long or are familiar with scripture, were hated by everyone. They tended, uh, because they had sold out to the Roman government, they uh, had obviously uh, said money means more to me than relationships. I don't mind if I'm hated as long as I'm rich. He was not looking for Jesus. He was not hungry for a relationship with God. Might not have even seen himself as needy. Very, very well taken care of. Hated, but small price to pay for being rich. So here he is, this guy that Jesus approaches right where he's at. He didn't come up and start preaching to him right off the bat. He didn't walk up and go, how in the world could you do this? You're a Jew and you've sold out to the right. No, he just says, hey, I'd like to have dinner with you. Let's go spend a little time in this plot of ground that you're trying to work. And so Jesus goes over. And it says, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came to eat with him and his disciples. Why? Because those were the only people that he knew. He was a tax collector. He only knew tax collectors and sinners. They were the only people that would hang out with him. What does that tell us about this man's field. Probably not the most choice, religious, or healthy, godly piece of property that you might find. Yeah, Jesus is meeting him at the exact place that he is on his plot of ground. Now, it says, when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat and drink with sinners? Because their response was, we would never be caught dead in there with them. Not on that plot of ground, not on that land. You wouldn't ever find us there. And yet there Jesus was on that plot of ground, starting where Matthew was. And he says these words. On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not to come to call the righteous, but, sinner, but sinners. He goes, I'm on this plot of ground because I care about the people that live on this plot of ground. And you should care about them as well. If you've got this great blessing in your life, if you've got all these great things, then you should want those great things for everybody. And yet that's not human nature, is it? 
No, most of us want our plot of ground to be better than everybody else's. And if they aren't contending their plot of ground the way I think they should, then let them have trouble. Let them suffer. Let them starve. I don't care. And Jesus said if we have that type of heart, then we don't have his heart. He said, you are so big about your sacrifice, about your religious observance, but you don't have mercy. How in the world can you say you have the heart of God? He said, I didn't come to help the healthy get healthier. He goes, I came to help the people who are unhealthy find health, which is part of the reason for the title today, The Sick Get Healthy. Now, the problem was the people who considered themselves healthy, they had a different sickness. Jesus was willing to help them get healthy too. The only problem was most of them didn't see themselves as unhealthy. And Jesus said at one point, he goes, the most blind person is not the person who won't see or can't see. It's the person who will not see. And he referred to the Pharisees as blind guides, unwilling to see. But Jesus is interested in starting with every person on their plot of ground, no matter where it is, and helping them get to healthy from there. So the very next thing that we need to look at is Jesus does not let the line define us. Jesus meets us where we are, but he won't leave us there. You remember, and when I talk about the line, I'm talking about the illustration that Jennifer did, where she had people based on their life experiences either take a step forward or a step back. And we realized that the people at the back of the line had more challenges on their plot of ground than some of the people in the front that had more advantages. And yet both of them had to find God to find true health, even though their plot of ground was different, even though it was there. And Jesus starts again where our plot of ground is, but he doesn't leave us there. Yet, he is not going to drag us to healthy. Some of the people at the front of the line need to wake up and understand that the little uh, things that, uh, that they've got going on great are not defining everything of who they are. And that they will never really be healthy if they don't find Christ to touch every single area of their life. At the same way, the people in the back can't whine and complain and go, well, I didn't get the piece of ground that I needed, therefore I don't expect anything out of me. In fact, when Jesus finds people, he expects something out of every single one of them. I mean, just look at the healing stories. You know, I mean, this one guy is told, if you want to be healed, go dip seven times in the pool of Siloam. To the lepers, he said, you've got to go all the way in and show yourself to the priest if you want to be healed. To the blind man, he said, you've got to take and wipe this, go and wash your face to be able to be healed. To the, bl uh, to the lame man, he said, I want you to roll up your mat, stand up, and walk. And don't underestimate the fact that that leper first thought through his mind was, how can I do that? I'm not able to. I'm crippled. You know, every one of us have an excuse for why we can't move to healthy on our plot of ground. Every one of us will find things that will keep us stuck on our plot of ground. If we don't understand those two principles, one, God meets us where we are, but he doesn't want to leave us where we are. But he's not going to drag us to healthy. He's going to give us the tools and the opportunity to walk to healthy, to get healthy, to till up that soil, to make it fertile in ways that it is not, to provide everything to bear good fruit. So here's the great news. Jesus starts where we are, and he's able to take us to where we cannot take ourselves. The bad news is he's not going to do it in spite of us. He's going to do it as we yield to him. So my advice is take the good news. No matter where you're starting, he's right there. Not to condemn you, not to preach to you, but to start with you right there and show you that he has a purpose for your life. But you've got to walk it out. Can't use excuses. Can't go, but I'm lame. I can't get up. Oh, but I can't. You know, I'm blind. How am I going to find this pool? I mean, nope. Buddy, when he tells you this is the path, walk on it. We have to choose to walk on it. 
like we looked at yesterday, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. If we have that gratitude, if we understand that God is with me, no matter what the challenge is, no matter what the struggles, he is with me. I will be faithful in little things so that he will make me master over the big things. I will learn the secret of being content in whatever situation, whether well-fed or hungry. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You start having that attitude, you're getting healthy. Everything's going to change. That land is going to produce good fruit. Let's pray. Father, Lord, it is so easy to get stuck where we are and think there is no hope or we've been dealt a bad hand or all those things that uh, just keep us stuck or going backwards, not finding health. But you said that you came so that sick people get healthy. God, make sure that you open our eyes to the places where we need that health. Lord, convict our heart every time we come up with a reason or an excuse to not follow you. And Lord, that you will break down the strongholds that hold us fast and give us life. We look for your supernatural provision to guard and to guide us in each of these areas. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul said it, if God's for us, who can be against us? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't care where you are in the line. I don't care what your plot of ground looks like. He's come so that you can get it healthy, rich, overflowing. Don't let anything rob you of that truth. And I'll see you tomorrow.